guys. So for our kimono origami lesson, what you're going to need, you're going to need a glue stick, scissors, markers of any choice, but be careful about picking your colors. Remember what we talked about with colors? I'm only choosing three colors. Totally up to you how many you use, but I really recommend no more than three. So some markers, a coffee filter, the round kind, not the triangle kind, some crayons for coloring skin. So I've got all these awesome multi-skin colored crayons and a piece of paper that you can draw a body on because we're actually going to put these onto a little person. So I've got some nice thick paper that I can cut out so I can make my little person. So are we ready to make a kimono origami together? Let's go. The first step of this origami kimono is actually coloring the coffee filter. Now our coffee filter, when it's all done, is going to look similar to this with your own colors, of course. And I've got it with all this cool tie-dye effect, and I'm going to show you how to get that awesome tie-dye effect right now. The first step will be to color your coffee filter with markers, and I'm using washable markers, not permanent markers, and it is on purpose. Trust me on this. You'll want the washable ones. When I start to color this thing, it's going to take me a long time, so I'm going to speed that up for you so you don't get bored watching me color, but guys, take your time on this part because you don't want any white spaces showing. If you've got white spaces showing, it's really going to mess up your work a little bit later. Okay, guys. So any kind of pattern that you want. This one I chose to go in circles and I did a pattern. I think I did green, blue, yellow, green, blue, yellow, and I went in circles. It does not matter how you do this thing. You can do zigzags, you can do dots, you can do swirls, squigglies, whatever you want as long as this entire coffee filter gets completely covered in color. So I'm going to speed this up for you and I'm going to color my entire coffee filter with my red, my orange, and my yellow. My coffee filter is all colored. It's got a few tiny spots, but we're going to live with that. Next, one thing I forgot to mention, we're going to need a messy mat. And our messy mats in class are just a thick piece of poster board that we're going to slip under here. Now, this one has already been used for one of these projects you can see right here. So you can see this kind of bleeds out. And this is something I'm very happy is not on my tables, and it's instead on this messy mat. So make sure for this next part that you stay, stay, stay on your messy mat. So I have put my fully colored coffee filter onto my messy mat and one other special ingredient that I forgot to talk about at the beginning, some magic juice. And guys, the magic juice is just water, but for fun, we're going to call it magic juice so it makes our artwork nice and magical and cool. So I've got my magic juice and I'm going to start spraying on my coffee filter, but I got to be careful because coffee filters are super duper thin and they can fall apart real easy. Anybody who's ever used water with magic markers before or washable markers might know what happens next. If you got a guess, take a second to guess. Okay, what's going to happen? We're going to smear this thing and it's going to turn into that cool tie-dye effect that you saw on my blue, green, and yellow one. So, all I've done so far, color this thing with markers and now I'm going to spray it. So when I start to spray, I want to get it all around. And I can start to see my colors are bleeding through. They're bleeding into each other, and they're making that really cool tie-dye effect. I'm pick it up a little bit so you can see it a little easier. And this is what it's going to look like. And I've got all this juice down here running around, which is why we're using a messy mat. So I'm going to lay it back down on here. And then I'm going to take this thing to the drying rack. We don't have to worry about this sticking to it because once it's dry, it slips right off. It's totally easy. So I'm going to take this thing like a lunch tray, not tipping it around, carefully taking that to the drying rack. So this one, which is already done, is what I'm going to use for the rest of our example on our Komodo. How magic. It's already done, so I can use this. Before we move on, we've got to make a person's body for this thing to wrap around. So. There are plenty of ways to draw a person's body and tons of better ways than what I'm going to show you because we're going to keep this thing really super duper simple. I'm taking a pencil and I'm going to draw two shapes. The first shape I'm going to draw is a rectangle and it's pretty long, kind of thin. And the next thing I'm going to put on top of this is a circle. Now guys, try your best on circles. I know that circles are hard, but it does not have to be the most perfect circle in the entire world. So I made a circle. It's a little too big on that side, but that's okay. When we cut it off, we will never ever see that. 
Next, I am taking my skin colored markers and I'm going to try to want, find the one that matches my skin tone. So I've got a couple of peachy ones in here and I want to see which one I think is going to match. Now I've got two different kinds of peaches here. I might hold it up to my skin and say, oh, well, I don't think I'm quite that bright. I might be more this color. And so I'm going to choose this one. I really recommend that you guys try to find a crayon that fits your color. That way, when we look at it, we can say, oh, that's Dejaria's or oh, that's Ethan's. That's so awesome. It looks just like them. So I'm going to color in the skin. And if you're using this in class and you're using our poster board, you know that one side is shiny and one side is not shiny. I'm drawing on the side that is not shiny because this crayon wouldn't really stick to the shiny side. And if you're at home doing this, get a piece of paper that really easily holds onto some crayon. So if it's giving you trouble, you might want to pick a different kind of crayon. Now, just like with our coffee filter, I want to make sure that I get no white space on here. So I'm coloring it in. I don't really have to color the body because we're not going to see the body. The only part that we're going to see is the head. So now I've got my face all colored in. I need to add some features. And remember, features are things like eyes, nose, mouth, eyebrows, hair, all that stuff on your face. So I am not going to use a black. I'm actually going to use a dark brown because it might match the skin a little bit better. Now, if you're in class, I've got that awesome handout for you that shows you all kinds of eye shapes and nose shapes and mouth shapes. And if you are not, I'm gonna post a link to it so you can go and find that online so you can do this on your own. So I'm going to, and I'm drawing upside down, so be nice to me. I'm gonna draw a little nose on here and some eyebrows and a little smile. And guys, this is not a portrait lesson, so we don't have to worry about making this thing the best looking face in the entire world. I just wanna get some stuff on there, maybe even my eyes. I will get some colored crayons a little later, maybe to do the green of my eyes, but for right now, I'm keeping it simple. You guys know that I have bangs, so I'm gonna do my hairstyle. You can do your hairstyle however you want to. You can do pigtails, short hair, long hair, whatever you want. But you guys know that I have wavy hair with bangs. So I'm gonna make this thing try to look as much like me as possible. It's got a little chubby face, but it's so cute. All right, and to save myself the trouble of running away and getting a crayon that will match for my eyes. I'm just gonna go ahead and use a black for the pupil of the eye. Just so I don't have to go and find a green crayon somewhere. I'll deal with having just little black dots with my eyes. Now when we do this together, you guys can add so much more detail because you're gonna have a lot more time. But I'm just adding some little things on here. So now it looks kind of weird. It's kind of like a doll with a little, it's like a peg doll. It's got a little head on a stick and that's exactly how we want this thing to be. Next, I'm going to be cutting this out and I wanna keep real close to my lines. And I know it's no fun to watch me cut stuff out. So I'm gonna speed this up and I'll come back to you guys when we get this all cut out. So now my peg doll person is all cut out and I tried to make sure that I didn't get any extra stuff. Like right here, I left a little extra stuff to show you what I was talking about. You don't want extra stuff. Get it right close to the lines as much as you can. So now I've got this part and I've got my dry coffee filter and it's a little bit too big and that is okay if it's too big because we can always cut something down to make it smaller but it's kind of hard to make something bigger so smaller or sorry bigger is better so here I'm going to experiment a little bit I put my doll right in the middle and I'm going to wrap one side over and wrap one side over to get the kimono on this thing now in a minute we can add any kind of arms and feet that you want to but we're going to keep it real simple right now just kind of wrap this thing like a burrito I'm gonna pull her head up a little bit more so I can see it. And this is how it's going to be. So now that I've experimented and I know exactly how I want this thing in here, I'm taking a glue stick, pulling my peg doll out, and I'm putting some glue on one side and on the other side, which is a little bit tricky because I don't wanna get, oh, I probably should start with the back, there we go. So I've got glue on both sides, got her up where I want her, and I'm going to wrap that again. Very simple fold, guys, so you don't have to worry about getting this perfect. We're just kind of wrapping it, and I would even go in and put in some glue here 
so that the flap of this kimono sticks down. Now here I've got a little bit of the body showing and I remember saying, hey guys, don't color that because we're not going to see the body. If you see your body a little bit, you can add some color to that with some other crayons, which I don't have over here with me right now. I'm going to grab oh, a marker because a marker is close to me. But you can use crayons, markers, colored pencils, whatever you want if you want to add some under underneath clothes to this. And I might even leave a little line there for that part of the neck that you might see. I hope that's the same peach I used. Maybe it is. Looks good. Little part of the neck. We can add patterns onto the clothes. So maybe dots or stripes or whatever. This guy's kind of looking like pizza with these little polka dots on here. And that's all right. Okay. Now, some of you might be asking, what about the arms? What about the legs? We have all of this paper left over. And we can cut very simple arms and legs out of this. I've started with just a rectangle. I might even cut it down to half size. And if I glue these things onto the back, we've got some arms. And if I take another piece, and I can glue those right inside, then we've got some little feet. And guys, you could decorate those feet, those shoes, your arms, however you want. So maybe I even want my arms to match that kimono that I made. So I used blue and green and yellow. I'm going to pull some markers and I might go ahead and just keep that pattern going. So I might do some blue. I might do some green. And it'd be a lot easier if I went ahead and glued this thing down, but I'm not going to glue it down right now. That way my arms will match my kimono and it all looks like it's going all together. So even over here, I'm going to put some blue. Another good thing about matching colors is if I run up on my kimono, it's not a big deal because it's not going to make it dirty. It's going to look like it belongs there. A little bit of green, a little bit of yellow. And I left the ends down here blank because I could go back in with my skin tone since that's where the hands would stick out. And I could color that part like skin. Okay, guys. So what I'm doing right now, getting a little bit of glue right there. Sticking this thing on the kimono doll. Little glue right here. Sticking it onto the kimono doll. And my shoes, I did not decorate my shoes. I'll go back and do that later and make them nice and pretty. A little bit of glue inside the bottom of the kimono. Little bit of glue inside the bottom of the kimono. And then, ta-da, we've got our little kimono person done. So that is it. And guys, you could add all kinds of details. We could put some ribbons over this like we saw in the pictures that we looked at. We always saw that they kept them joined with ribbons. We could even add little buttons. We could add all kinds of stuff to this. But this is real basic, keeping it simple, our little kimono origami person.